so we've got some ground to make up, right? Um, myself included. So I, in addition to the hurricane, I also was out of town this weekend. I had a previously scheduled uh, symposium to go to. Myself and Krista Franco, some of you, if you're watching my Twitter feed, you may have seen me posting some things. Uh, we went to the Society for Arts Entrepreneurship Conference, which is a, a, a organization that is geared toward teaching artists to be entrepreneurial and to start their own endeavors and to kind of manage that situation. So uh, that, that type of mindset, basically, of, of not just waiting for opportunities to come to you, but to create your own opportunities, which is a really kind of a good mindset for artists to have, yes. Um, and a lot of that has kind of been infused in some of my classes. Some of you have had me uh, in previous classes, uh, but continues to be. I think my uh, final, the final project for this class is directly inspired through some of the thinking that's come out of that organization and participating uh, with them. Uh, it was at a small liberal arts college in, in Illinois called Milliken, which some of you may have never heard of, uh, but it's a campus of about 2,000, uh, and yet they still have. I think they have more students in creative disciplines than we have, even at 2,000. So it's uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, student population because it's they have a strong business school, very strong creative arts programs, and that's in this kind of liberal arts environment, um, doing some really interesting things, which I can tell you about more later. Um, we the plan for this week was to be co uh, covering. Um, physical modeling and the readings revolve around that. You may have, if you've looked ahead and seen some of the titles and that sort of stuff, the instrument in live that I was going to point you to towards the tension instrument. Uh, it is one of the chief uh, physical modeling instruments. Um, because of the disruption, because of the time frame, I'm not going to get to talk very much about that in class because I do think it's important to have those workshop days where you can work on your projects and finish things up. So it's going to be more self-study when it comes to physical modeling. Um, it's also going to be more self-study when it comes to Max for Live instruments, which I think impacts, let's see, what we do with uh, Project 2, right? Because Project 2 was to, uh, the, the, the wrinkle in Project 2 was to use uh, the Eurorack or the Synthi or the, the Max for Live set in your project for Project 2, right? Uh, and if we haven't at least spent a day walking you through how to build a Max for Live object, I'm a little concerned for that last piece that I'm going to have nobody using Max for Live, which is going to be sad for me, basically, because uh, Max is like the program that's closest to my heart. Uh, I have the longest relationship with Max, basically, of the software that we're using. Um, what do you want to do about that? Do you, I mean, do you feel comfortable doing kind of just self-study, or do you uh, think that uh, of the two workshop days that we're supposed to have this week, can I recapture some of that time for a Max for Live demonstration, or do you feel comfortable just reading about it in Chapter 10? Because Chapter 10 basically covers how to build a Max for Live instrument. It means less time in class with me to kind of advise your projects. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd say what, take one day, pick one workshop day to learn how to Okay. Uh, especially if uh, if we can get through this today and kind of start to troubleshoot some, give you some time for project one today. Yes, because uh, I, I don't anticipate taking the whole fifty minutes. Of course, every time I say that, I end up taking the whole fifty minutes. But so I don't want to jinx myself. But um, so you might have some time today to work on project one. Uh, I don't know what's the sentiment in the room of should I take Wednesday to show you how to do a Max for Live instrument, and then you only have. Friday as a workshop day to troubleshoot things? I, mean, I would say take Friday as the day, yeah. Friday? Because your draft is due Tuesday, and then you can do, I can kind of respond to that on Wednesday, project-wise, in class? Yeah. For, for, for the draft, it can be audio or video, yes. We'll get to the project in a minute, but uh, or maybe we can come back, maybe we should come back to this discussion about uh, taking some time this week to cover Max for Live after we talk about Project One, yes. Uh, to me, of the two, between physical modeling and Max for Live, Max for Live is the thing that I have to kind of walk you through the steps and show you how to do that sort of thing. Physical modeling, I hope that you can read about, it. and maybe I can help you build a physical modeling instrument, right? Okay, so maybe I can merge the two creatively on Wednesday, something like that. Uh, so maybe we'll let's. Put a pin in this topic and we'll come back to it after we talk about Project One, okay? Um, 
stay tuned, folks. Uh, make sure we're, I know we're having a few side conversations. Are they about the project? No? Yes? Maybe? Okay. I just want to make sure we're all in this discussion here. Um, project one updates. Okay, you should have seen some brief uh, tweets from me about deadline changes, right? And also the information on Blackboard has changed. But to put it in uh, the, the slide format that you uh, have seen from me before, okay? Your draft is now due tomorrow at 6 p.m., okay? So that gives you today and most of tomorrow, or yeah, pretty much all, all of the daytime during tomorrow. I realize some of you uh, stay up well past 6 p.m. basically, but I need some time Tuesday evening to listen through what you guys have submitted before I come back in Wednesday morning. That's the reason for, I can't have it due at the beginning of class and, and listen to all of them instantly because I don't have the ability to stop time, listen to them all, and then start class over again, that sort of thing, okay? I haven't figured that out yet, okay? When I do, if you do figure that out, let me know. Um, so Tuesday, 6 p.m. is why the, when the required draft is due. Uh, I want to do then workshops in class on Wednesday and Friday, and then the completed project would be due uh, at 6 p.m. This is a little bit later because previously in the syllabus I talked about it being due at noon, like right after class um, in the morning. Uh, I'm giving you more of the rest of the day because realistically my Fridays are full of meetings and I can't get to it until 6 p.m. anyway, so I might as well give you an extra six hours to work on it, okay? Um, so, any questions about the timeline? Okay. Uh, on Blackboard, if you if you haven't seen, okay, I've added this Project One folder. Hey, internet connection, awesome. Let's see. I do need to just point this out because it's handled two different ways. The draft is going to be more like a traditional assignment submission where you, you click the link and it says attach the file and you, do you want to submit this assignment, etc. Um, so yeah, when you click on the Project 1 draft, you'll see something that looks more like a traditional assignment submission. You can add comments here if you're like, uh, if you need to say something, you don't have to say something, but attaching a file is what you want to do right here, okay? That's where you're going to attach your your bounced audio file, um, let's see here, or your video file, okay? Not the live set at this point, okay? Uh, that's what I want attached there. Uh, that's different than the final materials. What I've done there, rather than have you, um, rather than have you zip everything up and attach it all in one file, I've done this as a discussion board, okay? That does one of two things. One, it allows you to submit things in pieces, okay? So the threads are locked down. The threads are named for you, okay? Each of you has your own thread here, okay? Uh, so you find the thread with your, that's, the topic is your name, and that's the one you reply to with your materials, okay? You can attach materials to these discussion board threads, okay? Um, or to your posts to these discussion board threads, okay? That means that you can submit your final bounced recording at, at one point and then submit the live set in another post and submit your your uh, your par your paragraph uh, program notes whatever you want to call it basically as an as a third post basically so you don't have to do it all at once okay that's the beauty of this the other beauty of this is that you actually have access to each other's submissions right okay so if Isis submits something and she wants to shoot an email, say, hey, Jad, can you bounce on the discussion board and take a look at what I submitted and give me your feedback, basically? You can actually do that here, okay? Everybody can see what everybody is submitting here, okay? Um, so feel free to use it that way, basically, to trade files back and forth. That you, It doesn't have to be just me receiving the files. If you want to get a file to your friend to have them give it a listen to it, you can do that here through the discussion board. Make sense? Okay. Um, that's the other added value added I see here, basically. It also keeps everybody accountable, though, because everybody can see who has who has and who hasn't submitted things, right? Um, I'm subscribed to this, uh, so I actually you don't have to tell me that you've posted stuff here. Blackboard automatically sends me an email that somebody has posted stuff here. Okay, so don't feel like you have to Victoria don't submit something and then send me an email. Hey, I submitted something. Can you go listen to it? Because I Blackboard has already emailed me at that point. Okay, not that Victoria's ever done that, but. Just letting in, I'm using people, real people for real examples, okay? Um, questions about all that? 
Um, maybe the one thing that I think you, I'm, I want to make sure everybody knows how to do. Oh, come on. Uh, I've put here that I want, everybody should know how to do a bounced MP3 audio or QuickTime video recording. Everybody should know how to write a short paragraph and have it export as a PDF file, yes? Okay, whatever your word processor of choice is, export it to PDF and post it that way. Please, don't put it in the comments, don't put it as a doc, don't put it as a WTD or a text or a whatever. I want a PDF file of your, your, your paragraph, okay? Uh, the live set as a zipped archive. Does everybody know how to do that in the Finder? Live will save it as a project folder. You just simply control click on that folder and it says make arc, create archive and it will create a zip file for you, okay? okay? So if you've done that before, you should be able to do it on the, the live set, okay? Make sure you're doing the gather assets and save rather than just the save, okay? Because that gathers all your sound files and stuff in it, okay? Other questions? Okay. No questions? You sure? Okay. Reading responses. Okay, you should have seen another message from me about reading responses, yes? And what are we going to do with these? Because if you've been checking your grade in the grade book, you have seen that, that tally going up in terms of number of reading responses. How many points are you supposed to earn from the reading responses? Anybody know from the syllabus? Total for the semester. 15, yeah. It's 15% of your final grade, okay? And I'm going to just take that those points and translate them to 15% of your grade, okay? So if you're the kind of person that, you know what, I got my 15 points, I don't want to mess with it anymore, fine. Leave it alone, okay? Uh, if you're the kind of person that wants to tack on a few extra points, I'll go ahead and add those into your final grade. But 15 is the, the, the amount that you need in order to maintain a, a good grade in the class overall, okay? Uh, if you maybe have some absences, if you maybe have missed a few uh, uh, some other things, or if you anticipate needing to make up a deficit somewhere else, uh, there's actually 18 readings, and I will put all of those points into your final grade, okay? I'm on record, on recording, telling you this in class, okay? So there's a potential to earn three more extra points if you keep doing the reading responses, or if you've done all of them, okay? Make sense? Um, so, but 15 is not the cap. 15 is the mark you're trying to hit, okay? Uh, if you've got, if you're the kind of person that's like, I got other things to do, I don't need to waste time reading, which I hope that's not you, but, okay, uh, if that's you, fine. Uh, you've got your 15 points done. If you want to tack on a few extra, you can do that as well. Does that make sense? You seem puzzled by that. Um, so, like, each reading response we do is one point. Yes. 15. So, if you already did all, like, 13. Yes. So, in the... Post, what is now called the post-hurricanes reading folder, okay? I've taken the last 15, 16, 17, 18, and I've extended the deadline on all of them to be this Friday, 8 a.m., okay? So you've got until Friday, 8 a.m. to finish the reading responses for these four, the last four readings, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay? Um, yeah. That's what I'm saying, basically. Oh. If, it'll effectively function like extra credit if you have done all 18. It's like getting three points extra credit, okay? Russ and uh, fi well, 15 and 16 were actually due in week six. Right? Yes. Okay. I've extended the deadline on those through to okay. Friday. But, like, I've already done them, so they're good. So you're, d you're okay. good, yeah. If you already did, so if you already did 15 and 16 before your hurricane break, okay? You're good, okay. You don't have to redo those. I haven't had a chance to go through and grade them yet, okay. So you may not see the check mark in your uh, in your grade book yet, okay. Um, so forgive me for that, but I'll, I'll get caught up on that pretty soon. Um, but yeah, if you haven't done them, I'm basically extending the deadline on them through to Friday 8 a.m. Okay. Now it's enough reading that if you sit down at Friday 7 a.m. to try to do this, it's not realistic to read all of these in one hour, okay. Uh, yes, Catherine's shaking her head no. Okay. Uh, okay. I, 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 I intentionally put together a rigorous reading schedule for this class because I do think there's a lot of information you guys need to have at your fingertips and, and get your get under your, your belt, basically. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, uh, my advice is that you have, if you've done none of these four, is to do one a day, basically, okay? But I'm putting it, the burden on you to manage that schedule rather than me to put the deadlines every day, basically. Make sense? Okay. Any questions about the reading? Getting caught up on the reading? Okay. Uh, and you should be able to click on the My Grades link. I can't do it because I'm not a student, but and see what your total is in the in the reading responses yet. And I haven't graded 15 and 16 yet, but I'll I'll do that. Uh, some day today or tomorrow, basically. Okay. Okay. That tackles reading responses. Any questions about that? Okay. Let's talk project two. I have to talk, because today was supposed to be the day to start talking about Project 2, because Project 1 was supposed to be done, okay? The reason I have to talk about Project 2 is because I'm not here next week, okay? So I have to put it in your heads that as soon as you're done with Project 1, you've got to get started on Project 2, because I'm not here next week to answer questions, okay? Um, I, I would love to tell you that I will be happy to answer emails while I'm away, but it, this is the kind of gig where I'm going to be working from sun up to well past sundown, troubleshooting, fixing things, and I am I'm honestly not going to have time to pay much attention to email. Okay, so I'm, I'm telling you that ahead of time. Okay, so I want to set up that expectation. Okay, um, so. That's why I'm getting in your head that Project 2 is coming and to give you enough of a framework for how, how to tackle Project 2, uh, especially because some of you are looking at uh, Project 1 thing. well, I got this, I got this done, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be able to take the rest of this week off because I've already got Project 1 done. No, Project 2 is in the wings. Project 2 is, is the next thing you need to be working on, and uh, as soon as you're done with Project 1, you should be turning your attention to Project 2, okay? Um, so what are we doing for Project 2? Well, I'm going to be taking some of the genres that are in the chapters that we have not read yet in this book, okay, uh, and using those genres to form what I'm calling production teams, okay? Um, so you have been pre-selected, pre-assigned to genre teams centered around these chapter titles, okay? So I'm, I'm taking the choice out of your hand, sorry, okay? So, um, this is not live yet, but here it is. I think I put this in here, okay? So here are our production groups, okay? So you can see your names here. Uh, Christian, Nico, Maggie, okay? You guys have been assigned to Chapter 6, the Electroacoustic Chapter. Isis, Casey, Marcus, you guys have been sound assigned to Chapter 8, the House Chapter. Uh, 9, Breakbeat is Ian, Tori, and Hunter. Oh, Tony, excuse me. I don't know why I read to Tori anyway. Ten chiptune is Anthony, Catherine, Katie, and Matt G. Okay. Um, Eleven granular is Victoria, Daniel, Solomon, and Kuyu. Twelve dubstep is Jad, Matt B, and AJ. Okay. Any questions? Read the chapter. Find out. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will say, so I will say this, granular is probably more of a, a technique than a genre. That's my one critique of that chapter. Um, electroacoustic is a very broad chapter, basically, but he's talking, uh, a br very broad genre, because it's basically talking about academic electronic music is what he's talking about in that chapter. Um, I don't know, are there other questions about these genres? What is blank? Yeah. Of what? Eprom is his name. Eprom? No. It's, you mean Eprom? Yeah. Is, is that kind of like granular? Like, is it supposed to be kind of like gritty, like analog sounding? Uh, no. Gra granular is probably one of the most digital techniques there is in electronic music. There's not really an analog way to, I mean, there is. Uh, and Zanakis tried it and was sort of successful. Granular synthesis was my dissertation topic, so. I have a lot to say about this, so you could get you could get me going for the rest of the yeah. So no pressure on that group, basically. Okay, um, but hey, you can dig in my website and find a lot of materials about granular synthesis because I've spoken and written a lot about granular synthesis. Okay, anywho. Okay, just to get the framework for this right. Okay, you are in these groups, and your group 
everybody in the group should be doing a project that is to emulate this style of music, okay, or implement this technique, okay. So that decision has been taken out of your hands, okay. If you're in the house group, you can't be doing a hip hop track. If you're in the breakbeat group, you can't be doing a rock track. You need to be doing something in that style, implementing that technique. Is everybody clear on that? Uh, uh, try as much as possible to emulate the target. Okay, that's my directive to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you are also in this group as a kind of team. Okay. Uh, and you are, while I am gone next week, you are expected to uh, meet in your production teams and find out what each other are doing and help each other through the process of developing your projects. Make sense? This is kind of like a, you know, a peer study group, if you will, centered around project two, okay? So my expectation is that you're gonna be in these groups, meeting, listening to what each other are doing, sharing techniques, sharing advice, sharing information inside these groups, okay? Uh, it is not one group project. Everybody is supposed to do their individual project. It is group knowledge sharing. Make sense, okay? Everybody clear on the difference between those two things? Okay. Um, let's see. Ah, okay, so if you've read through the syllabus or reviewed the syllabus for project two, you may notice there's a stipulation in there that not only do you have to write a paragraph about the techniques you've used, uh, but you also have to submit a report from one production team meeting, okay? Most of you are in a group of three, but a few of you are in a group of four. My expectation is that you will meet with your group at least three times and different people will take responsibility developing a report about what the group covered during that meeting. Okay? Make sense? So it's not that you have to report on all of your group meetings. Everybody has to report on all the group meetings. You should share the responsibility so that someone else is submitting a group report of what happened in that meeting, when it happened, day, time, what people presented, what topics came up, what you kind of shared with each other. Um, that's part of your submission for project two, okay? So you need to be thinking about this, thinking ahead, okay? Now, you all have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. free on your schedules because you're in this class. That's the time you have available for this class. But if you so choose to meet with your group outside of that time, that's fine, so long as you are having three meetings and those three meetings do not happen on the same day. Make sense? Okay. Because it's no fair, uh, well we're going to have, it's due on this day so we're going to meet at 9 a.m. and then we're going to meet again at noon and then we're going to meet at 4 and then we're going to hand it in at 6. That, that's not going to work. They need to be on different days. Okay. So my suggestion to you is just simply use the days of the week that I'm not here and meet during class time and check in with each other. Okay. And do uh, kind of take notes, keep reporting. Who's going to do the report for this meeting, okay? And make sure you write everything down and submit that with your, your project, okay? Um, those of you that are in groups of four, uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can either have a fourth meeting so that everybody has one meeting to write about, or you can kind of share responsibilities so that two people are taking notes in three meetings, based, or in one meeting, okay? Uh, I'll leave it to you guys in the groups of four to figure that out, okay? Make sense? understand the framework for this so I, I'm giving you a, hopefully a framework to stay engaged in the process of making project two even though I'm not here I'm giving you a group to support you in questions basically because if something is unclear to one person the likelihood that it's going to be unclear to all three of you or let's see maybe it's not binary clear or unclear maybe there's degrees of clarity right okay that you can kind of work within the group to to clear things up okay um, so I've given you this information. You know what your production groups are. You know uh, the meeting expectations. Um, there is a possibility that I can get somebody here to give you outside help. I have an alum who lives in Daytona Beach who is uh, a, I'd say, I mean, he's, he is a longer, he's, he's been using Ableton Live longer than I have. Uh, and I know he knows Max because I taught him how to use Max. So he can help in that regard as well. Um, I could maybe, I, I've talked to him a little bit about having a day that he comes in while I'm gone that he, that people can, groups can meet with him. Is that something you guys are interested in? Just to have one more, one day with an expert? 
would you take advantage of that? Because the, 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 the thing I don't want is to tell them, hey, be here this Friday from 9 to noon so students can meet with you, and then nobody signs up to meet with them. Workshop over the weekend. Oh, so maybe if he was available like on a Saturday, would you be more likely to use it? Victoria's crunching her. It's easier for you. I, I wouldn't say I, I don't want it to be mandatory, but I also don't want you to uh, feel like you're. I'm throwing you into. Although I am kind of throwing you in the deep end, but I'm throwing you in the deep end with no lifeline of expert help on the topic where you have kind of specific questions. I once. I don't, maybe I don't need an answer right now, but I'm, I'm put, throwing that out there. Let's try to get an answer because I need to tell him before I leave, right, be here on this day and be available for people to sign up and ask questions and get kind of one-on-one -on -one tutorials or group-on-one tutorials, basically. Okay? Make sense? Um, he's willing to do it, but I, like I said, the worst thing in the world for me is to invite a guest to come do stuff and then one student shows up or no students show up, okay? And I don't want that to happen to him, okay? Uh, particularly because he's an alum, he wants to give back, he wants to help you guys, right? I want you to, I want you to want help. Did I say that right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, so we need to make a decision about that before the weekend, okay? Not right now. So my last little bit is a draft first draft of the timeline, okay? So production team meetings can happen those days that I'm not here. Um, so you've, got a, you've, you've actually got four class sessions that I'm missing. The 24th, 26th, 28th, and the 31st. Now, the 28th, there's actually a guest lecture that I put on the syllabus. It's been on the syllabus since the beginning. That guest lecture is actually happening at 2.30 in the afternoon, okay? So if you don't want to have a production meeting that day because the class meeting is going to that afternoon guest lecture, Natasha Barrett, who's going to be here, um, that's actually, those of you that are in the composition forum, that, that, that meeting has been synced up with composition forum on that day, okay? So you're already there at that guest lecture, okay? But those of you that are not in composition forum inside the music school, um, it'd be good to go hear Natasha Barrett. She's someone who's kind of at, especially those of you that are in the electroacoustic group, okay? She is an electroacoustic composer with a capital E, okay, and a, probably a capital C too, yeah, okay. Um, based in Oslo, Norway, uh, so she's coming a long way, uh, not just to be with us. She's a guest of the Atlantic Center for the Arts, but we we have a nice, friendly relationship with those folks over there, where they can send their world class artists when they come in over to our campus to speak to our students, okay. So uh, it's a good opportunity that you should not pass up, okay. Uh, but then, uh, Monday 31st at noon would be when the required draft for Project 2 is done, which is two weeks from today. This is the other reason for getting the schedule in front of you and for scaring you a little bit about Project 2 is now stacked right on top of Project 1, okay? Uh, so two weeks from today is when your required draft is due for Project 2, okay? The reason for the noon deadline is uh, noon here is 6 p.m. where I'm going to be, and I want to be able to download it before I get on a plane and cross the ocean so I have things to listen to. Make sense? Okay. So if you miss that noon deadline, literally I won't be able to get access to it to listen to it on my transatlantic flight. Okay. So the importance of deadlines. Okay. Uh, we will have. I when I get back, I will have workshops in class. I might be a little groggy the morning of Wednesday, the, the second, because I will have just flown all the way back from uh, Europe on the first. Uh, but I'll try to be awake. I'll try to be caffeinated. Uh, and then Friday at noon would be when your project needs to be completed. Makes sense. See why I'm talking about Project Two, even though Project One is not done yet. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to push back this project just because I want to make sure we have plenty of time for the final project in this class, okay? Um, I, I really view these projects as kind of the interim step. We've been, we've been talking a lot about topics and techniques. This is the, your chance to kind of try stuff out, try mimicking styles that are out there, okay, and apply these topics and techniques, uh, whereas the final project is more open-ended where there is no right solution for the final, right? Okay, you can, well, put it this way. Uh, there's, there's right ways and wrong ways to do house music, yes? Okay, you, and you can miss the mark on that, right?
But the final project is more open-ended, and so therefore it's up to you to kind of create things, okay? That's, we're at the higher orders of education at that point, where you're coming up and crafting your own unique solutions to difficult, complex problems, okay? Um, so, I'll just recap real quick. Uh, tension and Max for Live, okay, so looking at the schedule for Project 1 and Project 2, do you still want me to take some class time to kind of walk you through a Max for Live instrument? Because it will probably take a class period to do it. It's covered in Chapter 10, which is one of your assignments for this week. And I also gave somebody, some of you the actual genre for Chapter 10, chiptune. Okay, but it's covered how to make it in, in Chapter 10. What's the feeling of taking a class period to cover making a Max for Live instrument? It's, it's pretty clear. It's pretty step by step. Yeah, is, is, is that the sense of the room? It's kind of 50 50? I'm good with the self study. You're good with the self study? How many people are good with self study only? Uh, people are kind of half hearted. It looks like a lot of you. One, two, three. Raise them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Really? It's 50-50. Oh, wait, no, Maggie, you said oh, yeah. that you're 11, so it's now more than 50%. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll go that direction. I'll also see if I, I, I know there's a couple of, um, in the YouTube links, I don't know, how many people have been using these YouTube resources? Because this is not just our class recordings. I've actually got links in here. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, look at that. Cycling74 has a video tutorial series on how to program for Max for Live. What now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's tutorials out there. Uh, and Dude A37 has a lot of good tutorials as well. And he's kind of fun and quirky as well. Far more fun and quirky than I am. So if you, if you, if you like that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to do this stuff. So let's leave it with self-study then, okay? So to recap, physical modeling, Max for Live is going to be self-study, okay? I've given you the project one. Everybody understands what, your, what your, your goal is for this week in terms of completing project one. Uh, everybody understands what to do with the reading responses, right? You've got till Friday to wrap the Friday 8 a.m. to wrap those up, okay? The links literally disappear at 8 a.m. I may put a few extra minutes on there, but they, they will disappear, okay? Um, and then I've planted the seed for Project 2 info and the draft timeline. I don't anticipate it to change very much, but I put the draft on there just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And hopefully I've sufficiently scared you enough that you're, if you finish Project 1, you're, you're going to be immediately launching into Project 2. Make sense? Um, I guess the other reason for project one needs to be done this week is because I have to hand in midterm grades before Monday. And I, I, I really think that your midterm grade shouldn't be based just on reading responses. It should be a pro there should be a project in there, basically. That's the reason for getting project one done, OK? Um, so I'll be grading that on Saturday before I leave Sunday. Questions? OK, I didn't take all 50 minutes, did I? So you've got, you have, you have, I don't have seven left, you have seven left, okay? I'm going to stop the recording there. If you've got some things to work on, feel free. Um, maybe we can look at this update. That, Anthony, do we able to update or no? No, it says it's set up for auto-update.